Most importantly to Chris and to me is his belief in running a program with absolute integrity. So I'm truly excited to introduce Chris Kilsmeyer as the next head women's basketball coach at State University. And Chris, come on up. Everyone here is so nice and supportive and has so much energy and passion for this university and department. And it's, it is so infectious to just be around people that just have smiles on their faces and want to do their job at a great high level. And that's who I want to work for. That's the place and the type of environment that I want to be around. And no question do I feel like like I'm at home already. By the way, if you're a fan of Green, this is a matchup for you. <laughs> we got Green Bay and Cleveland State, both teams uh, wearing green, green the school colors. Ready for the tip. And it's controlled by Cleveland State. We are underway. Cleveland State trying to make the NCAA tournament for the first time since 2010. Green Bay trying to make it for the first time since 2018. So certainly history is on the line here today. Into the corner, Brittany Moore will fire away and connect. First point to the game for the senior from Memphis, Tennessee. Brittany Moore, the energizer bunny for Cleveland State. Good sign that she's hitting her three early. And you see Cleveland State in this matchup zone. They will be in it the entire game. Ball goes inside. As Jasmine puts it up and in, Jasmine from Gakowitz able to score first for Green Bay. We go back and forth. Let's take a look at our starting lineups today brought to you by Barbasol. Cleveland State, like we mentioned, the best offense in the Horizon League this year as Brittany Moore travels, averaging 75 points per game. And on the other side, Green Bay, team that has struggled with injury this year. We got a chance to talk to head coach Kevin Borseth before this one, Helen. He said, look, it's everybody available here. We have a little bit of a shorter bench maybe than normal. They have a shorter bench, but they've all taken on different roles willingly. Great pass there. Cleveland State brings in the board. Who else? Brittany Moore has been active early in this one in the first quarter. Destiny Leo. The bank is open on Championship Tuesday. Six to two. Cleveland State leading here early in the Horizon League Championship game. Kondrakowicz in the paint, spinning off the backboard and in. Scoring drought of two and a half minutes for Cleveland State. Moore trying to end it. Contested shot there. Koenig blocked out of bounds. I think Chris Kilsmer, fifth year at Cleveland State. Chris Kilsmeyer turning this program around. Now uh, hearing back-to-back -back conference tournament championship games. 320 win seasons over the past four years as this one is taken away. Up in the open floor, the talented freshman Deja Williams can't finish. The follow is there from Gabriella Smith. Senior from Bolingbrook, Illinois, averaging seven points a game. Cleveland, they want to create some offense from their defense in this matchup zone. And there's the area, you sport the logo area. You get a lot of one-on-one. -on -one. If it's going to be a high post or low post, there's going to be opportunities there. Green Bay reading it very well. All six points for Green Bay from Jasmine Kondrakowicz. She averages about eight a game. The ball fake there. Dish out. Brittany Moore open for three and hits. And Brittany Moore having a great start. Two for two from beyond the arc today. They talk a lot about Destiny Leo, and rightfully so, but Brittany Moore, again, is the energy bunny for this team. How she goes, they go. Drakowicz into the corner for Levy. And Levy with the answer. 11 to nine, Cleveland State looking to extend the lead with another three, no good. And a foul going the other way. It will go against Jordana Reisma. Back and forth we go here early on the Horizon League Championship game with a chance to play in the NCAA tournament with a win. It is 11 to nine, the two seed Cleveland State out ahead. Veteran team, they've been you know, with the coach uh, for four years, some five, a couple of players for five years and uh, I, they just could not sustain it. So another year older, another year of experience. They feel like they're supposed to be here this year and really feel like they have the ability to get it done. 
Well, it has been Green Bay and it has been Cleveland State atop the standings throughout the entire regular season. How about the putback? Cassie Schultz read it all the way off the miss. What do you want to see Cleveland State do a little bit more of in this one? It seems like they're settling for some shots here. Yeah, just have a little patience. They're able to get the ball into the post. Just a couple more seconds. Let the, let the players rotate around them. Schultz wide open for three and hits. Cassie Schultz with five now. Got to watch Green Bay because I've watched them, and every time they hit three three-pointers in a row. It's Birch. Mm, not going. Well, you've rarely seen any wide open shots for Cleveland State. Everything's been contested because of the defense by Green Bay. All of their last four Cleveland State is from the floor. There's McNeil once again. Had it poked away. Active hands in there by Deja Williams. And a jump ball, possession arrow oh, to Green Bay. Coaching up Burke there. Telling her to be a little bit more patient. And the run the play that I called. That one touched out of bounds. Going to stay home here with Green Bay. So with the fact that you see the Phoenix starting to shoot the three a little bit better. Does that maybe pull Cleveland State out of their zone at all or no? It's not going to pull them out of their zone because that's what they do. They play that matchup zone, so they may switch it from a 2-3 to a 3-2 matchup, but they're always going to play that, that matchup zone, and so you have to exploit whatever areas are open. Right now the middle's open. Bay patient waiting for a shot there and bodies hit the floor. See who this foul is going to be on. This is going to be the second foul on Amel Wafong. Fell over. Drakowicz out. I didn't see her there. Wide open for Bailey Butler. They are so good at their baseline out of bounds plays. They execute so well. Bailey Butler was one of the only bright spots for Green Bay in the first half of the game yesterday against Purdue Fort Wayne. Started 0 for 8 from yeah, they, beyond the arc. They struggled with, with turning the ball over. Yeah. And, and credit Purdue Fort Wayne for their defense as you see Rick Moore hit a shot there finally. They really, like I said, had to overcome some inefficiencies at the beginning of the game yesterday. And again, Green Bay trailed by as many as 11. Came back to tie it at the half, 32-32, and then went on to win it. Good ball movement here from Drakowicz, working on Reisma. Too strong. 30 seconds to go here in the first quarter. About two-second difference between the shot clock and the game clock as Deja Williams, just named the sixth player of the year this year in the Horizon League, will hold. Watch the screen on the ball. They do that at the end of the clock. Williams off the screen. Williams strong to the basket. Puts it up and in. Butler trying to get a last second shot off here and does. A little bit closer than uh, Cleveland State would have liked. But it's a one point game here at the end of the first as the brackets are announced. Followed by bracketology with breakdowns of each region at eight. The women's field of 68 is revealed with continuing coverage on ESPNU at 9. And at 10 Eastern, 7 Pacific, even more coverage of both brackets. Everything also streaming on the ESPN app. You can never have enough coverage in no. basketball. Never. This one taken away, back the other way. McNeil, great ball movement. Ends in the hands of Schultz as the player to put it in. You have the opportunity to exploit get a better shot. When you have transition like that, you're able to get a three-pointer, that is great for Cleveland State. Barbara Zenevska knocking down the three, her 25th on the year. She shoots it about 37% from deep. As McNeil, tough shot and a tough day. A guard playing the post, but she does a really good job of making great decisions for the most part from that spot. Villalobos has checked in the game as well for Cleveland State, number 33 with the ball here. Now into the corner. Shot too strong. We already see Cleveland State going to their bench early in the game, trying to find some combination that will be able to score. Here's a turnover, something Green Bay struggled with yesterday. Villalobos looking for help, finds more. 
Yeah, and the turnovers they had, as you see Williams going to the basket, were, they weren't all forced. They were kind of like lack of focus there. And they really struggled with that to the second half. Cleveland State trying to make it for the first time since 2010. Rakowicz blocked by Reisma. What a move by Williams to keep the dribble alive. Brittany Moore from the wing. Off the heel. And an offensive rebound by Villalabo. South to Danger Williams for three. That's part of the reason why she's sixth person of the year. She can score, she can defend. Second year transfer from Cal State Northridge. Played in 30 games last year for the Vikings. All down into Kondrakowicz again. And Butler short on the three. Green Bay has gone a little bit cold from beyond the arc. Uh, but by the end of the uh, second quarter, they were able to tie the score. Deja Williams bumped on the way up. She'll go to the charity strike. 83% on the year. And gets a friendly roll. The West Coast Conference Championship game. Gonzaga playing in it. They have played in every single West Coast Conference Championship game since 98. Equals the largest lead of the game at five. Yeah, now they are the ones who are pushing the offense way out, and they haven't been able to take advantage of that middle. Natalie to McNeil, another tough shot, but it falls right to Butler and puts it up and in with the left. Now four points for Bailey Butler. As the Vikings have a three-point lead with 4.19 to play. Strum for the ball ends up in the hands of Cleveland State. Into the corner, there's a shot. Gabriella Smith able to knock it down. That's going to be the six made three of the game for Cleveland State. McNeil contested there. Reisma whistled for the foul. From the logo to the circle. McNeil had a season high 16 points the last time these two met, which would make sense to your point, Helen, because she does work in the middle of that zone where there is a lot of space. Cuts the deficit to four, and a quick three and a hit. Gabriella Smith, she's only averaging seven points a game on the season. She's already got eight here today. That was lack of communication. There were five of them, five of us, but only four were covered. Nice move by Jenna Geyer, 6'2 redshirt freshman from Circle Pines, Minnesota. I say Leo has been quiet, but she was quiet yesterday until they really needed her at the end of the fourth quarter and the overtime. Oh, and a heat check for Smith. Puts the three up in the air. Gabriella Smith has made three of her three three-point attempts. has been the Gabriella Smith show. Last nine points scored for Cleveland State have come from Smith. Walk winding down here in the second quarter. Geyer, she's been strong with that left hand post move. And we talked with Coach Forsyth about by committee for Green Bay, but it's Cleveland that's playing by committee and getting things done today here in this first half. You see Gabriella Smith take over for a good chunk of time and also seen Deja Williams as well. And again, they'll wait for the screen on the ball and let Destin Leo navigate who plays her. Just three points for the Horizon League Player of the Year in the first half as Reisman's shot misses everything. It will be a shot clock violation. 10.6 seconds to go here for Green Bay. And Coach Kevin Borseth to draw something up here. Butler with a crossover, looking for help. Geyer, open, leaves it short. Reisma with the rebound. And that will end the half. Uh, but as the game went on, it got more tight. She was the one that wanted the ball in her hands. Everybody knew she was going to take the shot. And uh, she was able to produce, especially in overtime. So we'll see how long it takes them to get her back in the offense. So teams will switch sides. Green Bay now shooting to the right side of your screen. Cleveland State attacking on the left. 
And into the corner, Levy gets open for three and hits. Sidney Levy had a quiet start to the first half with just one for five. Again, Destiny Leo, Conference Player of the Year, had three points in the first half. She's only taken three field goal attempts. Well, Fong got fouled. 52%. This is her first free throw of the game and makes it. Fong averaging 10 points per game. Transfer from Radford. Makes both. Still in the zone here, but extended it. Just going to morph to the offense. Starting out as a 3-2, but they're going to morph to wherever they need to go. Drakowicz skip pass to the corner. Levy. Look how wide open that middle is. Jenke. For three. That's two made threes here. Jenke on the post. Working on Wafong. Wafong able to adjust the shot there. And another block, but a whistle. Going against Brittany Moore. Um, have to give them some credit. They played a really great game. They're yeah. going to be a good team. They're just young. Both semifinal games played here in this arena yesterday. Oh, she can't miss. Gabriella Smith back at it again. Drakowicz with a step through. Just couldn't finish with the left. Smith gets Levy in the air. Nice feed. Wafong up to the left hand. That's an excellent pass. The player that's been making a lot of threes decided to drive there and draw the attention. And Butler kicks it out. Schultz, ball fake, gets to the paint. No good. Just not making those shots. They're, they're getting the shots. He's not falling. Still a six-point lead for Cleveland State. Brittany Moore, long two is good. And that'll end a bit of a drought. Over three minutes for Cleveland State. Two rebounds shy of a double-double for Brittany Moore here in this championship game. A 7-0 run for the Vikings. Down low, Geyer. Schiltz. No good, the putback. And a foul. I believe that's her eighth or ninth rebound. Brandon Ingram and the Pelicans hosting Luca and Kyrie in the map, 7.30 Eastern time, then it's off to L.A. Well, we got a lot on the line here in Indianapolis as we reach under two minutes in the third quarter. Winner of this one advances to the NCAA tournament. Both of these teams have really been the top of the league all year long, and that three falls, Barbara Zanieska, largest lead of the game for Cleveland State. At nine points. Geyer, hand in the face, able to convert there. Chris Kilsmeyer, head coach for Cleveland State, extending some words to De Deja Williams out there. Ten on the shot clock. Twelve on the game clock now. Strong screen, Leo got bumped on the way up. No whistle, but she makes the three. Butler, the half court heave. No good, and Destiny Leo with the shot at the buzzer at the end of the third quarter. Once again, the more 10 points, eight boards, two rebounds shy of a double double here in this championship game. As we start the fourth quarter, trip to the NCAA tournament is on the line. Two seed Cleveland State with their largest lead of the game at 10 points over the one seed Green Bay. I really think you've got to set some screens on this zone so that you can free up and get some mismatches because just passing around is not working for Green Bay. And it hasn't really been a matter of the turnovers. Green Bay has just really struggled to shoot the ball especially from long range. They are now four of 23 from beyond the arc and just 15 of 56 from the floor. Leo hit that shot at the horn of the end of the third quarter. That one is no good. Koenig 
Ten on the shot clock, Butler from the wing. No good, and through the legs of Koenig and into the arms of Destiny Leo. Clear speed again for free Leo. She got fouled. She also led the league in three-point field goal percentage and three-pointers made. Led the league in scoring for the second straight season. It's very deferential to her teammates. And none of this would be possible if I didn't have them doing the things that, that they are doing as well to allow me to have these opportunities. Just, uh, just what you would want your leader and McNeil, open. Just hasn't been making those, Helen. She's been great on the defensive end with the rebounds. Got 10 rebounds. She's really struggled offensively. One for seven. Again, McNeil had a season high 16 points the last time these two played. Wafong spins right into the block of Kondrakowicz. She has a tendency to counter when she doesn't need to, but you get a three-pointer like that, we'll take it. The lead continues to extend in the timeout for Kevin Borseth and Green Bay as Cleveland State starting to feel it here in the Horizon League Championship game. Well, 12 made threes here today is a new season high for Cleveland State. They've made 12 threes on 26 attempts. They're shooting at 46% from deep. A completely different story for Green Bay here as Kondrakowicz tries to change that story, and the three won't fall. Helen, it's it's really tough to win when you're 4 of 27 from beyond the arc today, and that, unfortunately, is what Green Bay has had to deal with. Yeah, shooting 15% from three, only 25% for the game. Nice rebound there by Grafong. First foul on Natalie McNeil as Grafong hits that free throw. She's now three for three. After hearing Helen talk about her <laughs> I was just gonna free say, throw prowess earlier in the game. I'm surprised she didn't look over here at me. <laughs> <laughs> just has been uphill sledding all day for Green Bay. Skip pass, Tally Schiltz. No good. Five and a half to play here. Cleveland State is going to be content with dribbling out here. You want to use clock, but you want to execute as well. Leo had it poked away. Chris Gilsmeyer has to be pleased with what he's seen from his team so far today. Fifth season at Cleveland State. Came to Cleveland State after a stint as a Division II head coach at Wayne State. The all-time winningest coach there. Oh, Gabriella Smith. At it again, five made threes in the game. Kenny Brooks has done a terrific job there, and Virginia Tech, you know, seemingly three weeks ago, we would have said Virginia Tech on the one line. I don't know about that, but they played themselves into that conversation, no question about it. Yeah, they started off like gangbusters, had a couple of injuries, but finally got themselves together and got some, some rhythm, and they've been hard to stop ever since. There's a takeaway, McNeil in the open floor. It's a good sign of life for Green Bay here. McNeil still some time to play. Got to ratchet up the pressure for sure. Foul or jump ball? Jump ball, possession arrow, Green Bay. And Drakowicz on Wafong. Drakowicz spinning again up and in. A little quick little 4-0 run here for Green Bay. And another takeaway. Natalie McNeil. And it's a 6-0 run. You cannot relax. You've got to make strong, crisp passes, and you've got to come to the pass until you catch it. Natalie McNeil, double-double, second of this season in the fourth of her career. 10 points, 13 boards. 
whistled for the foul there. Four team fouls for Green Bay, just two for Cleveland State. Long inbounds there to Gabriella Smith, who's immediately fouled. So if you're starting to see what the game plan might be a little bit, it'll be her first free throws of the game. Cleveland State's 11 for 11 from the free throw line here today. They are 71% as a team on the year. Levy long three, that'll go. Sydney Levy's got nine. Three of the team's five made threes have come from Sydney Levy today. Leo or Smith or Moore to shoot free throws. If this is going to be the strategy down the stretch. How about a Mel Fong? 53% on the year. Six for six at the free throw line. Well, Green Bay swept this season series against Cleveland State. They won both of the games by a combined score of 142 to 114. So neither of the two games were really that close, but today it has been Cleveland State with the momentum. Down to a 14-point lead. The turnover is starting to pile up here for Cleveland State. Still time to play. Kondrakowicz fading away. How about McNeil? Told you she's a post player in a guard's body. Lead down to 12. It was all the way up at 21 at one point. Leo to the floor. Jump ball. Possession arrow, Green Bay. All of those passes right now, they're going to be very aggressive with that through these last couple of minutes. So, got to handle that. So, excuse me, it will be Cleveland State basketball here. Leo picks up the dribble, dangerous spot, and a foul, bails her out. Puts Destiny Leo at the free throw line, best free throw shooter percentage-wise in the conference. will check in for Destiny Leo. Levy's pass is tipped. Painting able to keep it alive. Neil calling for it. She's double teamed in there. Koenig for three. Yes! 11 point game. So now they extend full court here. Long pass to the Fung. Waiting for the foul, it never comes, and instead it's Deja Williams who gets fouled. Deja Williams, two for two, the stripe today. And this is the first. Goes one for two. Butler, back door. Kane off the mark, and Moore brings in the rebound. Foul there. Pretty more with a double double. Six of the season for her. 12 points and 10 rebounds yesterday against Northern Kentucky. So that's back to back double doubles for the senior out of Memphis. I think you're right, Helen. It might just be a case of too little, too late for Green Bay. They let the lead get all the way up to 21. Played well and shot it better here in this fourth quarter, but still. Yeah, you have to credit Cleveland State and their defense. Just in the investments that the coaching staff made. They were slight, but they were effective. And McNeil. Without Natalie McNeil in this game, 15 points. Now 16 and 13 rebounds. And really it was their defense. Uh, we talked about all the points they scored, but it was really their defense that uh, that won the game today. So Barbara Zanievska will take the ball out. Inbounds to Leo. Guarded by Butler. Here comes the double team. Flips it up. Gabriella Smith back to Leo. Foul coming 
just yet, and here it does from Levy. We talked to him last night over the phone. He's got seven fourth or fifth year players, but he said it, it's taken them a little bit of time to really find the right place and the right fit for some of these players. And it seems like he may have found it as well. Well, in, in today's uh, era of NIL and transfer, this it's, has it's been the best offense in the conference, averaging 75 points per game. Again, trying to make it to the big dance for the first time since 2010. McNeil, one dribble blocked by Noah Fong and fouled. Well, I, I think they're really good at just making adjustments, not just on the defensive end, but, but offense. As you see today that you didn't really get, you know, 19 points out of Destiny Leo, but it wasn't needed. You give the leadership of the team credit for that as well, of keeping people accountable, because that this doesn't happen if the teammates don't keep them, uh, each other accountable. The lost senior guard, Elioski, seven games into the year. Then you lose your second leading scorer, kind of Schreiber, in mid-January. So they've just kind of been able to piece it together and utilize a lot of their bench to get some help scoring. Never easy when you lose two of your leading scorers. Shot clock is off, and Cleveland State gets the ball up the floor to no fun. State going to dribble it out, and they will be the Horizon League champions for the first time in 12 years. Two seconds, one game over. The Cleveland State Vikings are headed to the big dance. They win the Horizon League championship, 73-61. The 30th win on the season for Chris Kielsbier and Drew, who's embraced the fifth floor by his team.